we're going to look at how we deal with uncollectibles. Specifically, we'll use the direct write-off method, and then in the next video, we'll look at the allowance methods. So, how do we deal with uncollectible accounts when using the direct write-off method? And so we need to start out by just dealing with the fact that selling on account has a benefit and a cost. The benefit is that we obviously have the potential to increase revenue and profits because we can make sales to a wider range of customers who might not have had the ability to purchase from us if we didn't sell to them on credit. The downfall or the cost would be that some customers don't pay and that creates uncollectible receivables. So customers accounts receivables that are uncollectible must be written off or removed from the books because the company does not expect to receive that cash in the future and so instead we need to record an expense associated with the cost of the uncollectible account and bad debts expense is the cost to the seller of extending credit and so that's an account that we're going to see us using with both methods and and so yeah, just we're going to be using bad debt expense. We'll look at that in the actual journal entry associated with it a little bit closer in the coming up slides. And so there's two different methods for accounting for the uncollectible receivables. There's the direct write-off method, which we're going to describe in this presentation. And then there's the allowance method, and that is the gap approved method. And so it's the one that should be used more commonly. It needs to be used by publicly traded companies um, and you'll see that more often, but the direct write-off method might be used by smaller companies and, and companies that have fewer accounts receivables that they're dealing with. So the direct write-off is primarily, like I said, used by small non-public companies. And under the direct write-off method, the accounts receivable are written off and bad debt expenses recorded whenever the business determines that it's not going to collect from a specific customer. So it's not predicted ahead of time, we just decide, okay, it's been long enough, we're just we're writing this off. Today's the day I decided we're not going to collect from this person, and today's the day I'm going to write it off. Once an account is re recur uh, excuse me, once an account is receivable is written off, we stop pursuing collection. So we just write it off, it's a loss to us, and we just let it go. Some companies might turn over delinquent receivables to an attorney or collection agency to recover some of the cash for the company, but generally, in terms of written off um, accounts, the company does not expect to receive any future payment. And so this slide shows an example of what the write-off would look like. So we're saying on August 9th, we determined that we're not able to collect $200 from the customer, Dan King, for the sale merchandise inventory made on May 5th. And so we see a debit to bad debts expense, which is increasing that expense, and a credit to accounts receivable, which is decreasing that asset. And so we're eliminating the asset and we're increasing our expense on this day that we've determined that we need to write off this customer. If However, the customer happens to pay us unexpectedly in the future, then we have to reverse that written off collect uncollectible account and reinstate it and then receive the cash. So you can see on this slide where first we're reinstating the written off account by debiting accounts receivable and crediting bad debt expense. And then in the next transaction, we're showing that we're receiving cash and again, eliminating the accounts receivable for King. So what's wrong with doing this? This seems straightforward and easy. What, what's the limitation or what's the issue? The major issue is that it violates the matching principle because we are, we're not predicting the uncollectible or the bad debt expense in the same year that revenue is generated. And so we're, we're not doing a good job of max, matching our expenses to the revenues that they generated. And that causes misstatements of our net income and our receivables. And so because of that, it's only ac acceptable for small companies and 
ones that have very few uncollectible accounts.